Okay, so I'm going to talk about goats. Now, I kind of expect this video to take, like, an hour to do, which feels absurd to talk about goats for this long, when, generally speaking, you're just running at the enemy and pressing W and mouse 1 and just running right over them. And that's kind of why, you know, Ghost of Strong, because it is technically just that easy. But the reason why we need to go into this level of detail of goats is because goats is so easy that everyone discovered that the only true counter to goats was to simply also run goats and run it better. Which then started a goats arms race of everyone getting better and better at it. And the thing is, is that um, I guess the best way to explain it is that, you know, go goats is about having a lot of health and a lot of heals and not and it's not that it has no damage, it's just that it has not a lot of burst damage, and just very, like, consistent, steady damage that wears you down. Whereas a normal composition that has DPS and it has lots of crazy burst damage, you know, Widowmaker headshots at 300 damage, McCree fan the hammer, uh, you know, even May here does 150 of a headshot. There's all these kind of spikes and ups and downs and damage that can surprise you and greatly change the battlefield at any given time. You know, if you play a standard 2 2, two of a Widowmaker, every time you play a fight, you could lose it, but then in one fight, Widow just pops off and starts killing people. Goats doesn't really operate that way. You don't really pop off and kill everyone. It's just this uh, sustained, say like a trench warfare, where you're just in the shit for a while, and it lasts a long time. And the only real spikes are in alt usage, but of course, since... Ghost has all this health and all this healing. Everyone has alts all the time, so alts might, might as well just be like Mercy Res cooldown, <laughs> where you, they're just always there. So even if you know you get Earth Shattered, and that's like the most mechanical spike that's gonna matter, um, you know your Zenyatta's there to just transcend into it. So okay, I just I just drew out more ultimates, and it's it's the same shit still. So in this situation, the value you're gonna get, the way you're gonna win it, is just the little micro details of doing those things better that's going to make the difference so we need a long drawn out explanation of it because it's not just simple of just well you know just run at them and push the buttons because you have to be very clear on your roles uh, and, and really kind of know what you're doing and start getting more value out of your cooldowns and abilities than the enemy team gets and if you can do that consistently then you're going to win so the way this video is going to work is, and then the reason why I'm we're watching May dance right now, is that um, I'm going to go through each character one at a time. Uh, May right now is the general. I'm just babbling in general talk about goats overall, not anything specific. So that's May. When we get to like Reinhardt, I'll be on Reinhardt, and you'll be able to see it. So that's useful for like if you want to skip to just the Reinhardt section, you want to skip to the Diva section, you'll know exactly where it is. Uh, May is our general section, and the reason why she's dancing and I'm not doing anything else is I found that my keyboard's very clicky, and I don't want to subject you people unless I have to. So, if I'm just going to ramble, then uh, we'll just not really be doing much of anything. So, um, the the first thing to kind of cover is is like, okay, so actually we'll just switch to Reinhardt right away because we'll 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 do the tanks first. I might split this into two videos to cover the supports, but um, we'll just talk about Reinhardt first. So now we're in. Justice will be done. And we'll dance. So Reinhardt, obviously the main tank, and he's basically the center point of goats. Um, as a main tank should be. He's going to be taking the most damage. He's going to be doing what a main tank does, going in first, and dictating the pace of the fight. You know, when you push forward, when you fall back. It was just typical main tank stuff, but it's... I guess one of the differences is, and this is like critical of why GOATS is kind of stupid, is that a lot of things that normally matter don't matter in GOATS, like positioning. Positioning is always very, very pivotal, but in GOATS, where you stand and where you take the fight matters significantly less. There are little details, that's actually one of the reasons why I'm also in the training room and not on a specific map, because while I could be like, well, if you stand over here, it's slightly better, at the end of the day, it's not going to matter as much as you would think it would. Um, there are some details that you can go over, but ultimately, you're not using cover a lot because, again, you don't have to worry about Widowmaker. You don't have to worry about McCree. There's no 
all of a sudden you're caught out and you you're going to get killed by something. The threats of goats, because it's pretty much always a mirror match, are very well known. And the most dangerous thing is probably Zenyatta, but he's mostly left clicking and not right clicking because left click is going to be way more DPS. And I'll I'll get to that when it covers Zen, but. Um, you're not going to get surprised all of a sudden and immediately die if you have full HP. So where you're standing almost doesn't matter. And so if we're talking about Reinhardt and what you need to be really concerned about is actually going to be cooldowns, both of what the enemy has and what you have. So, I mean you as in the team. So we're talking about our Zarya bubbles. You know, did the enemy use their Zarya bubbles? Have you used your Zarya bubbles? Did they use AMP? Did you use AMP? Uh, these are one of the things that you're actually going to really want to pay attention to. And one of the odd things about talking about goats and learning it is that because things like positioning doesn't matter, you have to like you can like hyper focus on these other elements. So while some of this goats talk is kind of seems useless and like the greater aspect of like trying to get better at the game and like rank up these things still matter in gm like i guarantee like if you ever watch like a gm reinhardt playing and they're just like charging in the enemy team like a moron and then you're like they won how do they do that because i'm always told if i charge it, i'm gonna die and yes you will die but the thing is i guarantee you that gm reinhardt that streamer that top 500 guy the owl player they actually did that for like they did that where some, sometimes they meme <laughs> sure sometimes they're memeing but i bet they had zarya bubbles up they had maybe uh, maybe even their ultimate like they had contingency plans in their head they knew exactly if this was going to work the odds of it working and whether or not they could get bailed out if it failed they don't typically just charge in like a moron for no reason they almost always have a lot of things going on in their head when they're doing it and when you're running the goats, like you can kind of hyper focus on some of these things that you that would normally be just like too much information because you're we're worried about so many other things, like positioning, that now you don't have to worry about. So, the thing so don't worry about too much where you're standing. Don't worry too much about like you can't be surprised again. They don't have widows. They don't have McCrees. You don't need to worry about suddenly going from like full health to like no health and be like, how did I let this happen? I, I screwed up somehow because that's really not going to happen in goats. It's, it's slow, it's sustained. Um, you're not going to get really surprised unless the enemy pit, try, pins you. That's like the one another the burst potential is you just get pinned. And I will get to the other characters, but they can usually bail you out too when you're getting into trouble. So the biggest focus of Reinhardt is going to try and figure out like when the enemy is weak and when you're weak. And that's almost always going to be about like, obviously health bars, of course, but also when they've blown cooldowns. So if you know that the enemy Zarya doesn't have bubbles, you know that the Reinhardt Shield is breaking and he's, like, getting low health. You know that maybe they just use Repair Pack, Amp. These are, like, the main cooldowns. Bubbles are the most obvious to see. I mean, they, they glow pink. Um, repair Pack might be a little harder to spot, but you can usually see these, and these are the things you need to focus on. And you need to be focusing on when your team is doing it to you, because you can't call these out like an ideal world Zarya is calling her bubbles and like everyone like, like everyone tells you but that's just too much words and you can't calm that stuff so you just have to be paying attention to these things and if you get to a point where your cooldowns exceed their cooldowns go in and like punish them for it like that's kind of what you need to be focusing on primarily as Reinhardt and one of the ways you're going to kind of facilitate this and this is where we start playing is that uh, you need to be getting more value out of your abilities. So for one, if, if you're like me when you play Reinhardt and you like you come out of spawn and you're like, hey, look, enemies, flame strike, you just immediately flame strike because because you just want to flame strike all the time, right? Like you want to get Earth Shatter as quickly as possible. So just oh, okay, flame strike. Um, and maybe you're a little bit smarter than that. Maybe you. You, you've got some of this figured out. Like, you, you know, you know wait a little bit. But, almost always you're just flame strike immediately. But in GOATS, what's going to happen in GOATS if you just walk out and flame strike immediately? One of two things is going to happen. Either D.Va eats it, and it doesn't do anything. Or Zarya bubbles. And she gets all the energy from it. So do you really want to just walk out of spawn and flame strike as soon as you see him? Probably not. Flame strike is very good. It's like your only long... Okay, that's great. <laughs> It's only it's your only version of like long range damage, so it's not something you necessarily want to just burn off cooldown. What is come on game? You don't want to burn it off cooldown. 
Because if, say, for instance, over on part of the other section of the fight, uh, Brigida has got herself out of position, and she's very low, and you want to kill her. So, oh, well, I'm over here, and Brigida's over there. Well, I, I can't. I'm over here. And I could walk over there, but by that time, she could be saved. So I was like, okay, flame strike. You, you need to have that available, ideally. If you see a point where, you know, like DM, or, you know, Defense Matrix just went down, you know, Zarya doesn't have bubbles, and there's like four of them in a row, boom. You get four guys for 100 damage. It's a lot of damage. And in the typical version of GOATS, where it's Zen, Lucio, and Brigida, it's it's a lot of AoE. It's it's technically a lot of heals, but at the same time, it's not really, because it's, it's low AoE heals. The only direct one is... I mean, the, the only real big heal is going to be Brigida's, and that's on a cooldown. So if you could just, like, chuck that much damage at, like, a bunch of them, and they all get low, that's a significant advantage. It takes a while, it takes seconds for them to finally get that regen up. And that's, like, opportunity for you to move in. And that's obviously also going to get you a lot of charge. So it's going to be a matter of not just, like, mindlessly doing it to get your ultimate, but being slightly more strategic with it, waiting a little bit longer... And just being a little bit smarter about it. And obviously, like when you do Earth Shatter, you're you know, follow you have you have your flame strike for when you Earth Shatter and then they're on the ground and you finish one off real quick. You get the pin, instantly dead. Easy. Uh, another thing to be uh, this is something you might already know, but this is like even more important in goats if you don't know it. So you know, Reinhardt does let me think. Okay, wait, I need to do this right <laughs> to demonstrate it. But Reinhardt's swing actually has, the hitbox of it is actually uh, farther out in the corners of it than in the middle. So even though, so I'm not hitting him. There we go, I hit him. All I did was turn. Because So when you want to swing, you want to be swinging like this, like an idiot, basically. Because suddenly it does, it starts hitting them. Even though it shouldn't. So, the way this this is like min-maxing stuff. So, if you're hitting Reinhardt and you're just doing this, sure, a lot of times you're still just hitting Reinhardt, but if you can cleave a Brigida, if you can cleave Zarya while you're doing this, and get that extra 75 in, again, their healing is not that much, and it's going to create opportunities. Um, and, and what you're kind of trying to do is force errors. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this is going to be a matter of how many errors you can force out of the enemy team and get them to do the wrong things and screw up. So, for instance, if Brigida then feels the need to heal Zarya over Reinhardt, that's all going to be a big problem for Reinhardt. He needs the Brigida health pack a lot of the times to, to stay alive and sustain himself. So if all of a sudden Brigida's like, oh shit, I gotta go heal Zarya because you kept cleaving her with that by just getting these like wide angles in that is actually going to make a significant difference. And not to mention, it's going to get your all faster. Um, it's it's going to be little things like that, that that does matter. And just in terms of, like... Uh, another thing to keep in mind is... So we're talking about, like, when does your... Like, when does positioning matter? So the other thing is, like... Okay, so you, you, you want to know when to go in. But if your cooldowns are all burned, you don't want to go in, obviously, because they're just going to kill you. Everyone behind you is like, ah, we're, we're damaged, we don't have our cooldowns, we can't protect you. Well, then don't go in. Duh. Like, don't. <laughs> and if you're, like, just wait it out. That's called, um... Uh, I just blanked on what it's called. But, um, you, you stabilize. You have to stabilize, get your cooldowns back, get everyone healed up, because, again, you don't have a lot of healing, so it, you have to wait for the AoE to tick up, and if everyone's damaged, you just have to wait it out. You can't just, like, double down and go in, and you'll get slaughtered. Because if they have their cooldowns, they will out-sustain you. Um, sometimes you can stabilize with ultimates, like Brigida's ultimate is probably the most obvious one, just because of it's generally low value, and it's it's good for stabilizing. But um, you, could use, you could use the other ones, like Beat is probably the second best, but... Um, sometimes it's a matter of backing up. And, and where this would be really useful is usually when you're on defense. Or, uh, like, if it's King of the Hill and you've taken the point, or if you're just defending, like, a a, a control point or 2CP, maybe. If you're running goats in 2CP. But, so, like, if, if let's say, the uh, the enemy's part of the point, like, like they're sp coming from spawn here and they're going to walk on the point right here. This is the edge of the point. So your edge would be somewhere around here. 
you know, generally you still want to take the fight, the initial fight over here and be kind of defending and swinging. So you don't want even to touch the point. You never want him to touch the point. But if, you know, you, st you start taking damage, you fall back, you know, maybe the last cooldown you have is amp. So you tell Lucio, you know, get speed, let's get out of here. And you just fall back. And sure, now they're on point, but, you know, ideally there's probably a corner here and you just sustain. And, you know, if they get some, if they get a tick, it's like whatever. You fall back and you sustain. You pull back to the next area. And just let them stand on point, stabilize, and then get them. But this ultimately, once again, comes down to you need to be paying attention to their cooldowns and your cooldowns to kind of get a good feel of when that's going to be needed. Um, it's going to definitely be your primary focus. And other than that, and the other thing, this, this is another thing about shot calling, and this is this is kind of like a, almost a general thing, but we'll keep it to Reinhardt, because there, there's two elements of shot calling that can kind of be like, depending how people use their words, like, it could mean different things, so. But the way I'm going to say it is there's, there's shot calling, and then there's target calling, and it's not necessarily the same thing. Shot calling is, is like, okay, what ultimate we're using... You know, are we going to Earth Shatter and then grab? Are we going to grab first? Are we going to initiate with beat? Are we going to rally? That's shot calling because that's going to be making the plans for the next fight. Or maybe it's making plans during the fight of quick, you know, amp speed, let's go in, go, go, go. And Reinhardt can obviously do that because Reinhardt's dictating the fight anyway. However, a lot of this is usually better by healers in the back because they have better sight lines. So, like, if there's, like, a Burgita off to the side or something stupid, you doing your Reinhardt stuff might not notice that. And maybe Lucio needs to be like, quick, quick, get Brigida, she's being stupid. Um, but when it comes to target calling, what's good for Reinhardt to do it is, is that Reinhardt has limited range. So does Brigida, but Reinhardt's hammer at least does a shitload of damage. So if you, whoever you're swinging at is going to be taking your damage. If Brigida's over there, you can't necessarily get to her. Maybe if you get speed, you can run in at her real quick. But you can't hit her, so whoever you're sh hitting should be the target, because that can get the entire focus damage of the entire team. Because if, if a t different target is called that you cannot reach, then five of your teammates can kill him, maybe, and you can't, and your damage is significant. Technically, you're not the DPS, it's usually Zarya and Zenyatta that are the most likely to be, you know, gold damage, but... Your damage is nothing to sneeze at when you're doing 75 a swing and that cannot be avoided outside of, like, a bubble. It's very important. So a lot of times the target is going to be Reinhardt because he's going to be the one in front of you and he's the only one you could swing at. Um, and that's fine. And then if you can get to a point where you want to push in on someone else, like, you you know, again, they have no cooldowns. You know, Zarya's used her bubbles. You've seen that Zarya is taking some damage for whatever reason. You know, Zen got some orbs on her for whatever reason. Maybe Diva's doing something. Um, and then you'd be like, oh, sorry, 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 let's just ignore Ryan, I'm just going to move in on Zarya, and you call that out, because you can hit them, and that's important. Now, you don't necessarily have to be the target caller, but this is just, like, a kind of optimization. Obviously, whoever should call the targets is the one who's most comfortable calling these things. Sometimes it's not going to be the Ryan player, but whoever is doing it should definitely be considering whether or not Ryan can swing on this person. And then, of course, this is, like, another reason why Flamestrike is valuable, because... If they are too far away, you can still flame strike them. Um, I think that's going to be a big thing. Another thing is, like, just in terms of Earth Shatter, um, ult ulting is almost its own separate section, but okay, one way you could use Earth Shatter, you know, obviously you're going to try and get around the enemy shield, um, you know, mind games and all that. Um, again, if you have your cooldowns, like, let's say it's like the beginning of a new fight, and you know you have Earth Shatter, um, you could just honestly just tell your Zarya, hey, Zarya, bubble me, Lucio, amp speed. Let's say the enemy Reinhardt is, like, right there. Oh, hey, enemy Reinhardt, bye. Earth Shatter. Like, just do it right past the shield. <laughs> like, you could do that. Uh, just keep in mind, you need Zarya bubble to do this, because otherwise you are running the risk of Brigida stunning you. Because Brigida's probably going to be right around here, too. But this is generally something that could only work... One is a surprise... But, again, like, Zarya could bubble herself and not get shattered and maybe even block her whole team. These things are possible. Brigida could also be shielding it. Even if she doesn't, sh like, block, she doesn't stun you, she could also be shielding it. So this may or may not work. But it's something to keep in mind. Is it, like, another strategy? Another obvious strategy of, like, combining ultimates is if you have a D.Va, throw a D.Va bomb behind them, Ryan turns the shield, and then, of course, Earth Shatter when the Reinhardt's looking the wrong way. 
but again, this is always something that's like best done where they don't have bubbles because bubbles protect against these things, and that's very, very annoying. Again, why you should be focusing on what the enemy cooldowns currently are. Um, and you could like go to the extent of actually like knowing the time and almost counting it out. And that's going to be a lot of work, <laughs> obviously. But the better you can kind of like know how long Zarya doesn't have bubble for, the better off you'd be. And if you have to go to the extent of counting it, um, that's obviously going to be difficult to learn but possibly worth it. Because eventually, if you actually start doing that, you won't have to count. You'll just know instinctually. You can get to that point if you just do it enough. And if you get to that point, it's going to be very, very good. So, Ming Hang's Ryan, uh, paying attention to cooldowns, uh, dictating the fight, when to go in, when to go out, based off of those cooldowns. And, you know, obviously, I guess I guess I didn't mention this, but it kind of goes without saying, is generally you want to be very aggressive. Because as we'll get to the other uh, people, is, is that most of the rest of your team is going to focus on bailing your ass out. So a lot of the Brigida health packs are going to go to you. Zarya bubbles are mostly going to go to you. The only reason they don't is if your team makes mistakes that they need to be bailed out of, and ideally that just doesn't happen. So the enemy, your team is going to help facilitate your aggression. And... That's just you're you're going to be swinging a lot, and your shield, again, because they have no they have no widowmaker, they have no none of this bullshit of DPS. Um, it's goats v goats most of the time. That your shield isn't like to protect your team. They don't need it. What's going to kill them? What what what, what damage is going to hit them? Like Zen at most, and Zen's probably going to have a discord on you. So your shield is mostly just to mitigate damage for yourself. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that you you do shield it to absorb. Zarya Beam, the orbs that Zen throws, a lot of that bullshit. But you're not doing it to protect them, you're doing it to protect yourself. It's another distinct difference in terms of how GOATS works versus other comps. Your shield is literally just purely to defend yourself. Um, because your, your team just... Because cause again, if, if, like we talked about how your range is limited, well, who's hitting your team, right? Like, obviously Ryan can't, he doesn't have range. Brigida can't, she's the same thing. Diva has, you know, fall off. Zarya's beam is fairly long, but not super long. Her right clicks can be eaten. Same thing with Zen's orbs, like Diva has defense matrix and stuff. Like, your team is not going to actually be taking that same amount of damage. And again, you have two AoE healers, so any chip damage they do take should be healed fairly easily. So, shield mostly for you, and that's like the other thing of like, just paying attention. Like, pay attention to your health, pay attention to your shield health. If your shields are getting critically low and you can't take damage anymore, then yes, that's another, like, we need to stabilize, fall back, and get our heals up. Get, get our heals, get our repair packs and stuff. Get, get anything we need back up and then go and re-engage. Do not be afraid to abandon a point that you cannot hold, because um, you don't want to die. Because, especially if you already hold it, this is another thing. Um, I don't technically want to get... I guess I should get into this because it's important. So, understand that, like, GOATS takes for fucking ever to, like, end a fight. Like, fights can literally last two minutes. They could last, like, 18 ultimates on both sides. Insanity. If you are holding the point already, great. The, the biggest enemy in Overwatch, the, the ultimate thing you have to beat is not the enemy team. It's the clock. It's always the clock. So if you hold the point, who cares how long the fight lasts? Who cares if, you know, you have to just fall back, stabilize, go back into it, as long as you keep it from being capped entirely or flipped or whatever the map type is, fine. Fight forever. Because if you control the, the, the zone, then time is on your side. You want to burn off as much time as possible. It's going to favor you entirely. So especially if it's like control, like, one of the biggest brain plays you can do, especially if you have, like, ultimate and stuff, is, you know, try and wait to hold the... F like, like if it's... La like, let's say it, the, the, it's control, it's 75% cap, you own it. You know, at 85%, it's last fight, give or take. 85% is last fight. So, at 75%, they could still have a second fight. So, if anything you could do to delay that fight... So, let's say... You know, again, that over there is where the end of the point is. Don't fight here. Like, who cares? Like, wait for that 10 seconds. Delay that fight as much as possible. Don't. Don't take the fight as quickly as possible. Take it as late as possible. Because as long as you can then stand on the point and keep contesting it, you know, 
this this doesn't seem like a huge deal, but this is like this is extra like five percent maybe ten. This could be ten percent before they actually do it because again they have to engage on you. They have to win the fight, so they have to push you. And typically, people are not willing to push very quickly, especially at lower elo. Like the fights are always slower at lower elo, and if you own the point, use that as an advantage. Don't necessarily take a fight early for no reason. Like let them wait out the clock. You know, if time's on your side, use the clock. Fewer fights, the better, if you're winning. Like, it's just, yeah, like, <laughs> just draw it out as much as possible. Now, of course, sometimes you might want to, you know, surprise all, ha, huh, and a win immediately, if that makes sense. But when it don't make sense, don't do that. And as Reinhardt, you're generally going to be the one dictating the fight. And this is, but this is, again, something for, like, the shot caller to be concerned about in terms of how you use your ultimate strategy of what ultimates you engage in and how quickly you do it. I always recommend using ults as early in the fight as possible, generally speaking, just to win the fight as quickly as possible, and then start charging your next ultimate. Um, this is I, this is also going to be your point for Roof Shatter, because, because you charge it so fast, these things, like, throw them out like candy. Honestly, never, uh, unless it, we're talking about, like, drawing out the clock, like, we're getting to last fight territory, and we want to make sure it's last fight territory, because we're going to win. It's because if because we have the ultimates to win this fight, this last theoretical last fight, then make sure it is the last fight. Because if you start burning ultimates and there's one more fight after that, well now you might lose that fight because you just lose your ult advantage. So those are the times where you might want to play slow and not necessarily use your ultimates quickly. Is if you have like the combo, and this is like if you have like somber goats, because like EMP Earth Shatter is almost like guaranteed win. Then take the fight later. And then EMP or Shatter later, and then win that fight, and then you just won the map. Because you've, you have you made sure there wasn't a second fight where you don't have an EMP or Shatter. But if we're talking just pure normal goats, your combos are not so, like, guaranteed wins. But if, in normal circumstances, just Earth Shatter early, so that you can get another Earth Shatter. Because every time you're cleaving into 6,000 people, you're going to be gaining ults so quickly. You can get two Earth Shatters a fight. You can get you can Earth Shatter twice a fight easily in goats. Easily. Um, and generally, I would say Earth Shatter should be the probably the first offensive ultimate used because it's probably the quickest charging ultimate normally. Sorry, it can be a little weird sometimes to charge ult super fast, but Earth Shatter should be the one that gets used. It should be the charges the fastest charging and thus probably the first used because then you'll just get the second one that much faster. Um, so yeah, we will now go to Saria. Truth be told, I am not a fantastic Zarya player. <laughs> I'm more of a Jane Zarya player. But again, so you're... I would say probably the best... Like, this this could be a matter of style. Like, your bubbles are mainly not to gain energy. They're to save lives. Especially your projective, obviously. But you could, at the beginning of a fight, be to speakly, like, communicate, okay... Right at the start, we're not going to be super aggressive. You know, they, let's say, because they're probably going to flame strike. you know, I'm just going to use my bubbles right away, get, you know, hit the flame strike, hit me, have a bit Ryan, you know, I'll get energy, and then we'll just play a little bit slow, because again, Reinhardt should be paying attention, you've used your bubbles. Ideally, you don't have to communicate so quickly, but it's probably a good idea, especially since it's early fight, there's nothing too much else to say. Um, we're just going to wait, you know, I'm going to use my bubbles, get energy, and then... Uh, play a little bit slow, don't be too aggressive, let the cooldowns recharge, and then from that point on, never use your bubbles again for energy. That's not what they're for. Because at that point, anytime you use your bubble, you're going to get maximum energy value out of it anyway, and you should be sustained at 100 energy for as long as you live, more or less. Because um, the only reason you're using a bubble is to save lives. They, they are life-saving devices. You're, you're not even going to do the thing where, like, I'm Zarya, I'm going to go here in front of Reinhardt, take some damage, and then fall back. No. Because, again, this is signaling to the team, hey, look, I don't have my, my bubble, and you can kill me, please. Come kill me, I don't have my bubble. That, that, that's what that says. So at no point you should be like, I'll just get some energy real quick, and I'll just fall back. No. Because now you're telling him, go, go in, Zarya's weak. And Zarya in general is going to be a, like, I won't say the primary target, just because Ryan is obviously going to have the Discord on him the whole time, and he's going to be the one taking the brunt of the damage, but you're a critical target. You're the target they're going to want to switch to if they see, if they smell blood in the water and they know weakness, because you're a primary damage. 
Zarya does so much DPS when she is full charge. So much damage on the shield when she's full charge. You don't want to give them that opportunity. And the biggest opportunity is if you don't have personal bubble. Because personal bubble is going to save you from pretty much anything really easily. Um, if, if you have personal bubble and you die to them pressuring you, I think something's probably gone wrong. Or they used ultimates, but... This is going to save you from a lot, because at that point, their Ryan, who's probably going to be leading this charge, should get pummeled. Uh, just by trying to like push in and like ignore your Reinhardt and stuff. That should really not work out for them, as long as you have personal. But if you don't have personal, you end up taking too much chip damage, you know, Brigitte gets a cheeky whip shot on you or something. They're going to want to push you pretty hard, because you're just a critical target. So, maybe you can get in with it early on, because it's the start of the fight... Especially if you're, like, attacking and they're defending, you get to really dictate when the fight happens. So you can very easily just, oh, it's the start of the fight, okay, I'll use bubbles. Okay, I'll just wait. Do, 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 and then go in. If you're defending, you probably don't want to do this because they dictate when the fight is. They're just going to be like, oh, Zarya just blew her bubbles immediately. Just charge in and kill them. So I guess that is a very critical note that I'm thinking about it. Is this is a, If you want to do the cheeky bubble strategy of trying to get energy immediately, only do it when you're attacking. Don't do it when you're defending. You, you need to save these bubbles to save lives. And the life you're most likely going to be saving most of the time is Reinhardt. So, the thing is, though, don't... You generally don't want to... So again, because we're talking about saving lives and not gaining energy. In a normal match, you would probably just be like, when Ryan goes in, you see him, like, when Ryan walks forward, you immediately just bubble him. I should get closer, just so I can... When I say bubble, I actually, like, push the button. So, oh, hey, Ryan, go in, and, and Ryan starts swinging. Goats is not the same thing because it's okay if Ryan takes some damage because you have three healers to, to deal with that like you have a Brigitte repair pack it's 150 burst heal that's on a six second cooldown like much faster than your bubbles so when Ryan starts walking in and he's you know obviously he's going to start immediately taking some damage he's going to be fighting the enemy Ryan don't be like oh I gotta immediately bubble because you don't Ryan's not at necessarily at risk of dying yet He's taking some damage, but you have all these healers. Your Harmony Orb's probably on him. Lucio should be healing. And Brigida should ideally, quickly as possible, get Inspire going, which shouldn't take too long. You don't need to bubble him immediately. Because he's not he's not his life's not immediately threatened. The repair pack, the first cooldown that gets used ideally will be repair pack. Because it's the fastest cooldown. As we see bubble protective yeah, bubble, I think it's eight seconds? Yeah, it's eight seconds. Repair pack is six, and it's and it is a direct heal, and it's directly charging Brigitte's ultimate too. Like that's the one we want to use first. Projected bubble, lifesaver. So when Ryan is like, okay, he's like at half health. We're, we we just saw the Brigida repair pack go, because there is a, a visually you can usually see it. That's when we need to start to worry about using predicted bubble, and that's going to be the signal for Reinhardt to be like, okay, we just use that. I need to stop being aggressive, and you can communicate to this if. The comms are not flooded with other calls. You could be like, I use predictor bubble, you might want to back up. But it's important to save it. And one of the other reasons why you want to save it is, is that you might have to bail someone else out other than Reinhardt. So if you're just like, oh, Reinhardt, go in and do it, now you don't have it. You might really need it. And the person you're most likely going to have to bail out is going to be Brigitte. Because as I'll cover in her section, she's going to be the one most likely caught out and killed. Um, because, again, she has to play similar to Reinhardt in a lot of ways, of being very front-forward to get any kind of, like, damage value. But at the same time, she's not nearly as tanky. And, like, she's someone who can get, like, tremendous value. Like, getting a nice, like, a good time stun could get, like, a tremendous value. And you kind of want to be able to do that and be kind of on the front line. But at the same time, if the enemy gets starts getting, like, really aggressive, she can't necessarily get out very quickly. And she can't take nearly the punishment that Reinhardt can. And the biggest Brigitte counter in the game, some people might not know, but some people think, well, it's fair or something. It's not fair, it's Reinhardt, because Reinhardt just so completely pummels her and there's nothing she can do to stop it. At most, she can just, like, shield bash away, but maybe she tried to use it already, maybe she, you know, maybe she already stunned Ryan and, like, oh, I got caught out and got pushed. You know, maybe maybe Ryan shielded the bash and it just didn't get any value, or, or Ryan got bubbled in the nick of time and shielded the bash. Either way... Brigitte's cut out, you need to bubble Brigitte. Otherwise she's dead. So this is going to be one of the reasons why you are saving bubble for critical situations because if you don't have it, Brigitte is dead. And the other thing about especially Brigitte is that like Goats, Goats is so powerful because it has so much sustain. 
and it's so difficult for like DPS to kill people because everyone saves everyone else. Brigitte is one of the primary people who saves people, so if she can't save herself, you have to be the one who saves her. So that's that's going to be one of the critical issues. Again, like Defense Matrix too, but Defense Matrix can only protect against so much. Can't protect against Reinhardt. Again, Reinhardt's the biggest counter. DM's not saving her from enemy Rein. Only Bubble can do that. So, while mostly you're going to be focusing on Reinhardt, you're obviously mostly going to be beaming down and just damaging whoever's the target is. Um, in terms of saving lives, it's going to be primary Reinhardt, but keeping an eye on, on Brigida, because she's probably going to need it. She's going to be the primary one. Also a chance of Lucio, because Lucio could be doing some cheeky stuff or something, but usually he's on a wall and he can just drop down behind the shield and that'd be fine. Um, it's possible he might get like stunned by Brig, and that could be a problem. Or again, uh, well, I'm focusing mostly primarily on goats. Obviously, if they're not running goats, then... You know, obviously roadhog hooks or whatever. So if, oh, oh, also, if they're running a variation of goats like Ana goats, if they're running Ana goats, then you're saving bubbles for to cleanse the Ana nade because bubbles cleanse all debuffs. So if someone gets purpled, you're saving that for that. Because if Reinhardt gets purple, he's dead. He's straight up dead. So that's even if he's at full health. Basically, you want to bubble him almost immediately because he will not be at full health for very long, and you can't heal him. Like that's that's a that's an emergency situation. Doesn't matter what his health is. If he's purple, it's an emergency. If you're purple, see when we're talking about your personal, like if you have personal, you can theoretically play more aggressive as needed. That's the point of personal is it bails you out. Um, again, you don't want to play stupid aggressive where you're just walking in because I have bubble, I don't care. But you could be more forward or more back as required, depending on your personal bubble. But. Uh, just don't be just thinking of, oh, I need energy, because you never need energy. You never use it for that. Um, but it can dictate your aggression. In terms of, like, how you, like, damage a Zuri, it's just, I mean, you're just going to beam most of the time. You can right-click. Like, if it's going to be Rhine Shield, like, there's just Rhine Shield. We'll pretend that's Rhine Shield. Then you want to just beam, because beam is obviously going to be, like, the most efficient way of damaging. You don't want to keep constantly reloading. Um, there's going to be, like, micro stuff where... You know, you beam, 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 and then right at the last second, oh, I screwed it up. But you, uh, you beam for most of it, and then towards the end, you, you know, you get like a right click because, um, as long as you have one point of ammo, you can right click at full health. So, if you want a micro Zarya, and obviously, like, micro really does count here, uh, fewer reloads mean more DPS, more DPS ultimately means more potential to win. So if you are going to micro, that's another thing. Um, if if Reinhardt is, for whatever reason, just like hammering away and you have more opportunities to shoot around him, for whatever reason, like through beyond the shield, and obviously if you can lob a right-click at like the entire enemy team, more or less, and just like get all that AoE, that's going to be very valuable. One for charging ultimate, and two just... Because again, the healing isn't so strong that they can keep that kind of sustain going and it's going to create opportunities for once again like Brigida to be low damage and then or low HP and then the enemy Brigida is the enemy Brigida low HP and then you know you can just oh Brigida is really weak push in because you've been cleaving with like right clicks but that's going to be more opportunistic otherwise you're probably going to be focusing mostly on left clicks on, on the Reinhardt specifically it's going to be a matter of just opportunity um in terms of like Graviton Again, usually what I saw with Reinhardt, you're probably going to want to initiate with Earth Shatter. Um, obviously, you want to watch out for the, the enemy D.Va and Defense Matrix. So, you know, don't do the classic, like, uh, oh, I'm reloading, walking forward, bubbling, and then hit Q. That's like, the, like if you self-bubble walking forward, because, again, you shouldn't be doing that because you don't need energy. That's just dumb, and it's that level of aggression basically tells the enemy team, hey, he, they're going to use ult. Because why else would you do that? Especially if you reload too, because it's again, it's a signal. Like that doesn't mean you don't want to. <laughs> doesn't mean you don't want to use grav when you have no ammo. But typically, actually, it doesn't really matter because you know you have a Reinhardt, you have uh, you have other things that do damage. So even if you did hit Q and then reload, not the biggest deal in the world. They got them all in the grav. It's all that matters. Um, but you know, because they nerf defense matrix, you can just kind of look for it and just be like, oh, they just DM. Well, then I hit Q because it has now a, a cooldown to it that they can't just immediately bring it back up. And obviously, if you shorten the distance to, uh, you know, you don't have it out in the wild, because the farther you shoot it, the more longer it is out that can be eaten. As soon as it hits a wall, it can't be eaten anymore. Um, another thing is just, uh, 
Like, don't be afraid to grab only even a single person. Everyone always thinks that you have to get the, the big graviton, gotta get everyone in it. It doesn't matter. If you get two people in it, and you kill those two people, you've just won. You've won already. It doesn't matter. You've, you've killed, you know, a third of their team. What are they gonna do? They might be able to stall the point. Granted, it is goats, and goats could get stupid, but if you get two kills, it doesn't matter. Like, that's all you need to win. Even one kill. If it's Reinhardt, like, sometimes solo grabbing is fine. Don't be don't be too concerned about the five man grand. Usually your goal is to do alt as quickly as possible so that you can get the next one all the faster. Um, like another thing is like we're talking like, like platinums or something. Any kind of like lower elo person, they always get it drilled in their head that um, lower elo has a problem with ultimates. Like they're very bad at using them. That's not that they use them too much. It's just that they don't get good value out of them when they finally do. And part of the reason is because they hold them for too long. People think, well, that means I should save it for the right moment. No, just just use it <laughs> when you need it. And if it's the start of a fight, you definitely need it because you haven't won yet. Um, when you when you hold it for too long is usually when you use it at bad times because when you're holding it for too long, you either then like you panic and be like, oh man, I gotta use it at some point. I'm just gonna like maybe I can turn it around all. And then you throw it away because you've already lost the fight and you used it. Or you held it for a while and it turns out you won the fight, but then you ult because oh, I was supposed to ult and I just didn't do it yet. I guess I'll ult now. Yeah, but you already won. You didn't need to. So just ult early in the fight. That's when it's going to have the most impact. And again, Earth Shatter first makes the most sense. And then when you when you use the grav, Ryan can just swing into your grav ever when you grab it and then start building the next ultimate really quickly. So think that's a pretty good summation. There isn't much to talk about in terms of aiming or anything. There's also some minor things about, like, um, if you do get into a situation where, like, you're, you're like, uh, bursting down the Brigida, again, you can, like, beam, 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 and then when you get uh, low, you can kind of, like, right-click punch. It's kind of a decent combo. Um, but it's mostly going to be making sure you have your bubbles to save people and just being super, super aware of that, just being primary and just smart grab usage. Also, you can grab walls and stuff, too. It's, it's like, common stuff. That's nothing particular. Um, just don't... Uh, don't be stupid. Problem solved, right? On to my gal Diva. So, Diva's a weird case. In the sense that she is not actually very important here. <laughs> like, she... The reason why most variations of goats, just, they don't... They always swap out the Diva. Like, you know, May goats, Snotes, uh, Smotes, Somber goats, um... Any variation almost always swaps out the D.Va for the other character, because the D.Va doesn't actually do anything in GOATS. Like, in terms of your job, like, you don't... Like, you, like you have Defense Matrix that saves people, right? But most of the enemies in GOATS don't have projectile weapons or, or any kind of thing you can eat. Like, there's... you can eat Grav, okay, sure. Um, you can eat Zenyatta Orbs, but, I mean, he just keeps chucking them out constantly. You can't eat them all. It's only two seconds to eat it doesn't really matter. Um, Everything else, it's like, this doesn't do much in goats. But what D.Va is, is a threat. You, you run D.Va because it, it makes sure that they can't run anything else. Like, if they had a Reaper, you put Reaper in the shame box and then everyone murders them. Because now Reaper can't do anything. If they're running any kind of other, like, like they're running anything with, like, massive cooldowns that do massive damage, like, you know, uh, McCree or uh, Hanzo, if their abilities, you know, put them in the box, they can't do anything. Like, like D.Va's value is almost always going to be about preventing counter goats strats from working. Diva's a threat, but that doesn't mean that Diva does nothing in goats. Because what what you really want to do is obviously you're gonna be similar to Zarya, you're just gonna be shooting things. Shooting, 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 shooting. Like you're gonna shoot in the Rhine Shield, you're gonna try and damage whoever's discord and then getting that value. But that's pretty basic stuff and not necessarily super useful. So in order to try and get more value out of Diva to get like special value out of Diva is going to be like, it's going to put you more in sort of dangerous positions so let's say i guess we'll just say that, uh, this i don't know if this actually comes up in any map that's useful but let's say let's say the enemy rhyme was here and they're just, you know they're, they're the enemy team's over here do, 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 shoot, 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 shoot. and you could stay behind your rhyme and be very very safe right and just kind of shoot forward maybe you throw your missiles out um you know I, ideally you do want to save your missiles for when you find kind of like with Ryan's flame strike, you want to get like get that opportunity of like, oh, there's a there's someone caught out of position, boom, kill him, you know, get that super burst damage in. But um, 
missiles though is very significant. Like early in the fight, you probably do want to like walk out of spawn and immediately start missiling and start getting that pressure in. Because generally speaking, you're, you're, no one's going to be out of position and easily killed that quickly into a fight. So you could probably just you know burn them a little bit and then maybe. Once you start realizing the potential opportunities, then wait for it. Like, when you know uh, things are starting to get dicey, and you might want to save those missiles for, like, when it could really impact a fight, and when you might be, like, a critical moment when you know you know everyone's low on resources, but you have the missiles still, and, like, you think you might get a position where, like, oh, Zarya is really low. She, You know, she's that personal. I think I could just kill her right now. Things like that. But... But, but back to what I was saying, so like, you could just be safe behind Reinhardt, but again, you have you have 600 HP, you have so much health, right? And you have a lot of AoE healing, and again, this goes back to the running goats, there's no burst damage, there's no snipers, there's none of that shit, so against the other goats, if you were up here, sure you're not safe anymore, right? You're not safe. You're not behind Reinhardt's shield, you're, you're basically exposed out in the open. But who is going to actually kill you up here? What do you have to worry about? Ryan can't hit you. Brigitte can't hit you. I mean, Brigitte witch shot you. Ryan could flame strike you. These are significant sources of damage, but okay. Um, sustained damage. You know, sorry, you could probably beam you. Um, if she if she right clicks, you can eat it. Uh, Zen could you know throw orbs at you. Could discord you and throw orbs. That'd be you know oh, that hurt. That really start to hurt. Um, you can eat them. But you know that's that's damage. But here's the thing. Here's, this is what I'm getting at. So. Okay, you, you start taking, let's say you're at 600 health, um, you go up here, you start pummeling him. So this is like the only advantage is that, well, Ryan's probably a really good target. You want to damage Ryan's shield if that's all you can damage. Like, you don't, I mean, you just shoot forever, you don't need to reload, what's the point? But if you can not hit Ryan's shield, if you could just be above him and, you know, start shooting at him, for, I don't know why I keep falling. If you could just shoot him from above and just, like, clip him. You're putting actual direct damage on them. You want to do direct damage. You don't want to just shoot the shield if you can help it. And maybe in opportunities of like, okay, there's a brig here, I can shoot the brigade. Um, if it's too far away, like hitting the Zen probably wouldn't do a whole lot if he's like way out there. But if you could avoid the shield entirely, that's great. And yes, you're exposed. You're gonna get hit probably. They're gonna be like, I love divas out of position. It's probably their thing. They're gonna think divas out of position. Here's the thing: you're not out of position. This is brilliant because what what you're doing up here. Is, is now, if Zen discords you, Ryan's not discorded. Your Ryan is now safer, because you're discorded. If Zarya is sh shooting you because, like, oh, Zarya can, you can't DM Zarya. She can, she can damage you. Oh, no. But how much damage can Zarya really do? Like, it's, I think, full energy. She's, like, 180 DPS a second, which is quite a lot. But you have 600 health. So if you DM... Zenyatta. Like, oh man, Zarya is focusing me. I have a Discord on me. So you're taking probably 200 DPS. Um, you have a couple seconds. Be like, oh, okay, no more damage. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm now here. And here's the thing. You you may have taken, you might be at 300 health by the time that happens. You may still have Discord on you. Yeah, you're low. And actually, I, I backed up like that, but of course you're, you're D.Va, so again, you can boost out, you know, you don't necessarily back up, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm in trouble, boo, okay, bye, goodbye, out of here. You know, you're D.Va. So, now you're behind range shield, now you're in the back line, and you're still doing your damage, you're still 2 2 2 2 2 2 and you have some fall off, but it doesn't matter. The thing about this is that you might still have Discord on you, you have taken so much pressure off of Reinhardt, you've taken so much pressure off of your Reinhardt by doing that. And what have they done to you? What have they done? Like, okay, you took damage, but so what? Like, you have AoE healing. Like, Lucio is going to be constantly healing. Brigida has inspired. You're going to get your health healed back up at the cost of nothing. And they just wasted a ton of damage doing nothing. Like, don't worry about charging their ultimates as goats. Everyone has all their ultimates. You're charging your support ultimates, which is going to be far more valuable. Who cares that you've charged, you know, their graviton slightly faster? Because fuck that, who cares? You've charged up all your supports faster. And you've more importantly taken a tremendous amount of pressure off of Reiner. You've wasted so much time. And now Ryan's just swinging away at their Ryan, like with reckless abandon, because because you've saved, because again, if, if you're paying attention to the, like the rest of these, you've probably saved your Zarya from using bubbles, you've saved your Brigida from using repair packs that could be used later in the fight. Like, this is where you're probably going to get a lot of value. So you could get, like, high ground's gonna be ideal. High ground's gonna be ideal, because then no, definitely no one can really stop you. If sometimes you may have to just take, like, an off angle, like, let's say the fight's happening here, like, we're over here, and you're just gonna be, like, over here. You're gonna be over here. So technically you're away from your team, technically you're out in the open, but boost. 
You have boost. It doesn't matter. I have boost. Like, they can't stop you. I mean, if Brigitte walks on you and stuns you, you might be in a problem, but that's actually just putting their Brigitte in serious trouble of being out of position. Like, you can be significantly more daring as D.Va than you probably normally would be. Because, again, they can't, you know, be aware of your threats. This is true of every game. This is, like, another universal truth, is in any given game, you should always be aware of what can actually harm you. Another thing I notice about lower level or lower ELO players is that they don't really take an account of what their actual threat is and what maybe they should be doing. Like, what do they threaten? So... Like, this is a simple matter of, like, high ground, basically, is, like, if you can take high ground and be safe from the serious threats, then why aren't you doing that? And who can stop you? Who stops you here? I guess the enemy D.Va, but again, if, if she's doing that, you're in, like, this dangerous 1v1, and then maybe, you know, your Zen can back you up, maybe you just back off, and it's not okay, let her have it, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, that just puts them in danger, because if you, you have control of what you're doing, this is fine. Um, you know, take these positions. Odds are their diva is just gonna play safe, just gonna play behind right shield, and not, you know, just do, you know, just contribute damage like a bot. You're just gonna bot out and like DM what nothing, because I guess you can DM enemies in the auto orbs, but you're basically gonna save DM for when Ryan is in serious, serious trouble and you're backing up. Like you can throw it out every once in a while just to get like just to kind of keep it used, because if because if if the beater's just fully charged all the time, you're not, you know. You're, you're kind of just wasting cooldowns, you know, you're not, you're just leaving on the table, so mitigating that every once in a while might be a good idea, but it's, it really just depends on, like, if the enemy has Graviton, that's, that's gonna be the reason why you don't want to do that, because if you do that, then it's like, oh, well, now they can grab because I can't do it again, because there's that cooldown, so if you know they have Graviton, you basically never want a defense matrix just to keep that threat alive, um, even if you're not even very good at noticing when to do that, um, you know, it's going to be kind of a team effort to try and tr alt track accurately. I did, in the Zarya thing, give away the obvious cooldown, uh, the obvious giveaway of if they run at you and bubble, them, like, they have a self bubble for like really seemingly no reason, odds are they're going to grab, especially if they're reloading. Um, that's like the best, you know, t like the best obvious tell. But uh, yeah, you're probably not going to eat grabs, but you do want the threat of eating grabs. If you DM for like no reason, they know they can grab. So, you can get away with that when you know they don't have grab, but if you don't know, DMing for the most part isn't going to matter. Now, where D.Va might change is if, again, if they have, if they're not running Zen Goats, like the, the traditional Goats that everyone else is running, if they're running Ana Goats, then your defense makes it more important, and what your role does is more important, where you want to try and eat the date as much as possible, you want to try and eat the sleep darts as much as possible, and in, in times when you, like, you've put someone at critical, especially if it's Reinhardt, you can put that enemy in a shame box, and then they can't get healed by Ana, and that's hugely important. This is basically why Ana is not run, because D.Va shuts down Ana. Yeah, this is, you run D.Va just to shut everyone else down, to shut down possible opportunities the enemy could play. Um, not just because D.Va is like, because D.Va just shuts down so many things. In terms of your bomb, um, obviously if you get demac at any point and you have bomb, then you just want to immediately just get remac. Like, you don't want to be d mech and try and, like, pea-shoot at people and get mech back. If, if you need to resuit, if you need to use alt to resuit, go ahead and do it. That's fine. Um, in terms of, like, how you get the most value out of bomb, um, I think the most likely one that'll work is probably going to be the thing when I set off Earth Shatter of bomb behind the enemy team. Um, as soon as their enemy Reinhardt turns around, Earth Shatter them. Yeah, but that's going to be an obvious one. You know, the pros were doing, like, um... Diva bomb into Graviton and stuff, but um, that might work. But again, they're gonna try and shield it. Um, Ryder could try and go for a pin in that stuff and try and do it, but we're not really playing at that level <laughs> for that to matter. Um, odds are it just gets blocked. It's it's probably stacking ultimates in weird ways. Uh, your best bet is to throw out bomb, either either combo with Earth Shatter and, and do the re the old switcheroo and force them to shield behind and then Earth Shatter them, or alternatively use bomb to force them into uh, bad positions so um the obvious choice would be for instance if let's say i'll just say brigida because again brigida is always going to be the one that gets caught out the most so let's say brigida is off to the side and most of the enemy team is over here if you could throw bomb right in the middle 
um, you basically force him to split because Brigida can't cross the bomb threshold. Basically, she she won't have the opportunity. So then your enemy can theoretically push into that Brigida and punish it. So that's like the other option of just using bombs to split teams that are already split, or to keep them split that are already split and prevent them from ever rejoining during the bomb. That's kind of the other option. Like that's that's why every, you, you're trying to like force them into an opportune positions. That's the best way you're gonna do it. Is if they're already kind of split and you just force the split to to be, uh, you know, more permanent as the bomb's going off. Um, and that's gonna require a, some degree of coordination because you basically have to tell your team that's what you're doing. You definitely have to tell them. I'm going to basically throw bomb, and I want everyone to rush at Brigida, or whoever is split off, and kill them. That's going to require probably, um, probably like amp speed too to make it actually worthwhile because you don't have a huge window while the bomb's going off, and you definitely don't want to get caught out. Uh, but yeah, that's throwing a bomb was almost always going to be kind of a, a hail mary of a bit. It's just it's very easily blocked because of traders and bubbles and uh, Reinhardt shields. But again, if if you're paying attention to enemy cooldowns, and honestly, Ryan, it's most important for Ryan, but you do want to be paying attention to bubbles because if Zari has no bubbles, the odds of bomb succeeding is drastically higher than if she does. Because she's probably... Because, again, if, if the enemy was split, and let's say it wasn't Brigitte, let's say it was, like, the enemy D.Va. The enemy D.Va's over here. Uh, or no, say Zen. Zen, makes, Zen, I don't know why Zen would be over here, but let's just say Zen's over here. Um, you know, he can't necessarily get behind the Ryan shield, but Zarya can always throw up a check on him and save him. So, if you know she doesn't have it, then he can't be saved. And that's gonna be a good. So, I think that more or less does it for tanks. So, I guess for D.Va, it's gonna be mostly like... Try and create opportunities. Diva's going to be a character that, because she doesn't have any specific jobs, she's not critical for life saving. You know, try and create opportunities by taking weird angles and flanks. Don't be afraid to take damage. You will get healed by your healers. It might not be quick, because honestly, Brigida should not waste repair packs on you. You should not be taking so much damage that you're so critical that you need it. Um, just take some damage, take some of the pressure off. Let them think that you're vulnerable and just like boost away. You don't need to stay in. Um, and kind of create opportunities that your team can capitalize on and win with. That's that's going to be kind of your focus, unless they're running some weird variation. The other thing I guess to know about D.Va is that, yes, if, if you have a flexible D.Va player, that's great. Then you can run variations of goats, like you can run a May goats or you can run a Sombra goats. Um, the thing to know about, I guess the thing to know about, like, Sombra goats, I'm not going to get into how to play Sombra and goats, it's, it's basically running Sombra. <laughs> like, I, one thing, if, I guess if you're running against a Sombra, or um, things to keep in mind, is that if you don't have the D.Va, then Ana goats becomes much stronger. Um, that's kind of like one of the counters to a Sombra ghost, is just then run Ana because you don't have to worry about stuff getting eaten. Um, and it's just bubbles you have to worry about, and that's easier to deal with than defense matrix which is kind of like you know diva kind of always has defense matrix right like it's you, you're never supposed to run it out so um if, if you were running a somber goats be aware that they might run an on goats which is going to be a stronger version of goats and that kind of matchup and generally the key of winning with a somber goats is going to be speed um like if, if you're running against the somber goats you want to be very aggressive and be a lot more willing to kind of push in and, and take risks because the reason is is that when Sombra is not in a fight, she's invisible, she's, you know, teleported away, she's out of the fight. It's now effectively a 5v6. You know, at least with D.Va, you're still here, you're doing damage. You're not super important, yes, but you're still a threat. You D.Va still does a lot of damage. She's still, you know, she's just not critical to the comp, but she is a threat. She's she's a force. You don't, you can't necessarily completely ignore her in terms of, like, what she can do to your team. But if Sombra is not in the fight, she's literally not in the fight. She's not doing jack all, and that's the time to push in. And EMP is such a strong ultimate that will charge so fast in a Goat's Comp, like because there's just so much people to shoot and farm alt off of, and how powerful EMP is. Um, the the way to beat a Sombra Ghost is just to run at them very quickly when Sombra's not around, and take the opportunity of the six v five that you have when you have it, and try and deny them from just constantly EMP, because if you play too slow and you play too cautiously, they'll have EMP like every fight, and they'll win every fight with it, because it's the strongest offensive ultimate in the game, and it's so strong against goats. Um, and if you were running your own, you know, Sombra goats, just be aware of, like, the danger of Ana goats, and, um, obviously you just want to farm EMP and then combo ults with it, because you can then combo, like, Earth Shatter with it. it's probably the best one, Diva Bomb's pretty good with it, 
but earth shatter emp is basically like you can't there's no defense against it if they're not uh, the only way to defend against it is if one of their supports is just hidden and doesn't get emp'd which at lower elo they might not be that smart to do that hard to say uh but yeah so uh, the other one is may goats which again is going to be similar where you're just the idea of that is you're just getting a tremendous value out of the wall you just wall people off and then Reinhardt like pins them up against the wall, and you just kind of like shut down Reinhardt immediately, and then push in with that. Without the value of wall, May is honestly not very good. She's not really good. I love her to death, but she's not a very good character outside of her ability to wall people off. If you can't wall people off, don't do it because <laughs> she's not. She's not gonna be nearly as valuable of a, of a character as Diva. Diva's DPS is far better. Honestly, the ultimate's far better. Um, Everything about Diva is going to be better outside of the fact that May's wall is extremely strong and hard to counter around and play around. Um, but yeah, beyond that. Um, and, and yeah, if, if they are also running like quad deeps or something weird, you know, your, your role as Diva is going to be a lot more aggressive and offensive of trying to find people to shut down and pick off and something like trying to take duels or something. But that's that's a whole other bag of words. And we're, we're mostly focusing on, um, on the goats. So with that, I think um, we'll take we'll take a bit of a break, and we will continue with part two with the supports. <laughs>